Do the flow arts have any effect on mental health? Can they be part of a treatment or therapy for illnesses or other mental health problems? The answers to these questions are not super clear yet, but I'd still like to take a look at these questions nonetheless. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain, and today we're going to dive into those brains, big time. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I have down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Pekka Pekkonen. Thank you so very much for your support for my work and my mission. It is Mental Health Awareness Month here in the United States, and that's kind of ironic because <laughs> I myself have been struggling with a lot of my mental health this month. And I am going to go for a walk and take you all with me. The reasons for which I hope will be clear by the end of the video. So for those of you who don't know, I have major depressive disorder, a condition that used to be referred to as clinical depression, and that results in my going through cycles where I have difficulty getting basic tasks done, interacting with people, and even in severe cases, engaging in self-harm. I've done videos before talking about the specifics of how my depression manifests, but suffice it to say, I've been struggling with it pretty bad for several months now, and it's been tremendously frustrating and exhausting. While my current depression isn't as bad as the depression I experienced earlier in the year or even last fall after I was assaulted, I'm also just so fatigued from experiencing it for so long that even a bout of moderate depression like this one is just wiping me out because I don't really have the emotional or physical reserves to cope with it anymore. The good news is I'm not having any thoughts of self-harm and I'm doing a pretty good job of staying socially connected. I have been falling behind in work and I am very frustrated about that fact, but I also have a great support network including close friends and an awesome therapist. So as these things go, I'm in a pretty good position for navigating this. But it is still a fact of my life and something that I wrestle with on a regular basis. So let's talk a little bit about this from a broader perspective. Specifically, does poi spinning help with this? Does it or any other flow art have a therapeutic effect on my condition or anybody else's? The short answer is, probably? There's very little research that's been done here, but the research that has been done looks at least somewhat promising. A few years ago, I did a video on the health benefits of the flow arts that incorporated as much current research as I could find at the time. Most of these studies focused on things like physical health, strength, dexterity, and even coordination and cognitive functions. And in this respect, flow arts in general showed a great deal of positive health impacts. I'll link to that video in the description. And theoretically, flow arts could have great therapeutic impacts on a variety of different mental health conditions as well. A 2020 paper from Lori Sears and Julie Meek suggests that poi spinning could help develop focus in people with ADHD, help trauma survivors to ground and re-inhabit their bodies, help people with anxiety disorders work through negative self-talk, and get people with depressive disorders, like myself, to be more active and interrupt low mood states, among many others. These are all hypothetical outlines, though. The paper is a call for more research in the area rather than a study that supports any of these impacts or conclusions. Now that said, there was one paper I found that did perform a study on people learning juggling as a therapeutic intervention for women with anxiety disorders and found that when coupled with therapy and medication, learning to juggle markedly improved outcomes for patients being treated for anxiety over a six-month span. Big caveat here, the sample size was really small. But here's the thing, I don't think we actually need a bunch of research saying the flow arts specifically has a positive impact on mental health, though I welcome that research if it happens, don't get me wrong. And this is because we already have a wealth of research showing that regular physical activity and being outdoors has a positive impact on a variety of mental health problems, including my own. To put it more simply, we don't need flow arts to be a silver bullet in the therapy world. It works for the same reason that yoga, running, and hiking do. It doesn't matter what your intervention or treatment is just so long as you find something that you do on a regular basis. Flow arts is a great fit for that, as are many other physical activities. There's no wrong answer here. So now I'm going to pull it back into the world of anecdotal evidence. So take all of this with a grain of salt, but there is something I want to highlight about that last study I cited. While it shows positive effects on anxiety from learning juggling, 
That's also coming along with talk therapy and medication. Flow Arts has had an enormously positive impact on my life. It has given me a fulfilling career, been my gateway into learning higher math, and allowed me to connect with incredible people from all over the world, to say nothing of the ways in which it has made me feel connected and present in my body. Getting out and spending poi has been helpful to my mental health. It has been helpful in managing and stabilizing my depression, but it did not cure it. I still have depressive episodes. I'm in one right now. Flow arts and other forms of movement therapy can be helpful interventions, but they should not be thought of as either the only or even best options for facing mental health problems. You know what wound up being a tool that was just as, if not more powerful for me than spinning poi? Going to therapy. Talking to somebody about my destructive thought patterns and getting some ideas of how to retrain them or work around them. I've known people for whom spinning props has had an immeasurably powerful impact on their lives, both physical and mental. I would absolutely recommend it to just about anyone, and if people are wrestling with mental health problems, I would also highly recommend talking to a mental health professional. That's their job. It's what they're trained to do. Sometimes it takes you some time to find one that is the right fit for you, but I swear to you, it's worth it. And in the meantime, one of those things I've definitely lost track of over the past few weeks has been my commitment to my flow. I've spent a lot of time trying and failing to get myself caught up on work and, well, feeling an enormous amount of guilt around that. I've spent quite a lot of time pushing myself not to lose social connections even as I struggle to remember how to human. I have not, however, set aside time for myself to come outside and just flow for myself. So this video is kind of me making myself do that. I hope you all don't mind. Well, thanks for coming along on a walk with me and for talking about mental health. I will confess I feel very self-conscious about how short this script is and feel like I should have done more research, should have covered the topic in greater depth, but I'm also accepting and forgiving myself for doing my best with what I've got. I hope that you all can too. I'll include links to the research I cited in this video down in the description as well as to the service that I found my own therapist through. If you or someone you know is struggling and could use some help right now, you can call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration at 1-800-662-HELP. Take some time to learn about mental health disorders this month, whether or not you have one yourself. A little empathy can go a long way in making the people around you feel more comfortable talking about their own struggles. And the more openly we talk about mental health and remove the stigma around it, the more people are gonna be able to live better and longer lives because of it. Did you get anything out of this video? 
please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to keep the conversation going, to help other people find it, and to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible if it were not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I'm on a mission to bring poise spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link in the description or the card that just popped up if you are watching on YouTube. There you can get access to a whole host of rewards and help me along in my mission. Do check that out, please and thank you. What is your mental health story? Has Flow Arts helped you with your own struggles? What are they and how has Flow Arts helped? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your story. In the meantime, I'll leave a link to a playlist on some other videos I've done on mental health down in the description as well as up on screen if you are watching on YouTube. Make sure to get out and flow today and I'll see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.